And welcome back to Block TV, time for Trader's Take. And to help us understand where we are and where we may be going, I don't think it's the moon, we're joined via Zoom from the East Coast by our very own technical analyst, Joe Saz, who knows anything and everything about everything. Joe, it's so lovely to have you with us. Do take us through the chart. Hi, Ayel. Pleasure to be here. So I had a number of requests from viewers after the episode a couple days ago. Um, asking me to clarify certain technical uh, pictures and you know terminology here. So yeah, let's jump into the charts and I'm going to take it a little slower so people can understand a little bit more about what's going on with the things that I'm looking for when I refer to head and shoulders, descending triangle, et cetera. So let's, let's jump in here. Rock and roll. <coughs> so here was that first weekly chart that we were looking at. And when I described the descending triangle breakdown, this, this is exactly what I mean. Here's the back of the triangle and this is the noticeable decline in bounces off of this this established low right we bounced off of this low pretty pretty hard this is called a hammer this candle right here that has a very long wick on uh, the bottom and a shorter wick on top with a very small body this red part that's called a um, you know that's called a hammer and so what we did was we bounced and the psychology in that is very positive it says people did not accept this price and it quickly came right back up so we bounced out of there, creating this as an established foundation. This is a, a nice convincing bottom. We bounced up to this height, and then as you can see, we continued to do this little zigzag, but in a downward trajectory. So this means that there was a lot more hope in this bounce and a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more aggressive buying, and then we fell. And then there was some more aggressive buying, but not as high as the previous. So what happened was we created this descending triangle pattern based on the trend line that shows we never were really able to break this white line here and that created uh you know the ultimate breakdown because this just tells you less buyers less buyers less buyers less buyers and this tiny tiny weak bounce no buyers and then just crash you know and this is this tells you a lot about the psychology of the market right now and the psychology um, of the market how would you describe the psychology of the market right now in one word I pessimistic. Okay. Uh, I think there, there's there's also uh, I want to say a word that also includes uh, scared and, uh, and confused. So I'm not sure pessimistic fully encompasses the market psychology. Right. Now. I'm not sure pessimism uh, completely encompasses the state of the market right now. I'm also feeling a lot of fear and confusion. People are saying. What is a good price? Was 31 a good bottom? And it was convincing when we were making our way back to 4K, but then we double topped at 4K again. So uh, it's it's like the the market space is consumed with fear, it's consumed with doubt and uncertainty. That's known as FUD in this space. And I mean, there really aren't even external narratives driving that. That's just what the technical picture draws. What the technical so on top of that, we still have a number of things to uh, to look at. Okay, you know, going, back um, charts, in, in going back to the charts, Joe. Going back to the charts, Joe. So Let's back to the charts. Um, we're moving right along here to, uh, there's a 15-minute chart. Here was that trade that I drew in a couple days ago. It looks like it's panning out. I mean, we're still in a, this is a 15-minute chart. And things are still looking like, uh, you know, a little more organic right now. There's no massive, uh, you know, buys, no massive sells in small time frames. So I'd say this organic activity is going to lead us sideways for a little longer than I was expecting. I was probably expecting something a little more, like I said, more violently down, uh, you know, very aggressive selling. So right now this is a nice kind of calm time to take your deep breaths and maybe, you know, step outside of the, uh, step outside of the charts for a minute, you know, to live life a little. Um, <laughs> no, no, okay. So, yeah. Uh, any questions? Yeah, coin by coin. I mean, if we can, if you want to look at them coin by coin and give the yeah. overview. Okay. So yeah, let's jump right into Ethereum. Uh, right here, what we have is uh, what we discussed the other day. We're pretty much ignoring this in this sequential nine buy. So when there's nine sequential candles trending, uh, selling in this case, uh, trading four candles below the previous uh, nine times in a row, that creates a nine count. And according to this theory, that's a good time to buy. And yeah, if you bought at this bottom, it does look like there is option uh, opportunity for a little bit of um, profit there. But considering the pessimistic outlook of the market, I'm not convinced that this nine is going to be taken seriously. 
you know, like this nine cell where we had nine consecutive upside candles, this nine cell was absolutely taken seriously. And I'm, I'm saying that's partially because there was a double top here. We had a big inverted hammer. We fell down. We made our way back up. Um, and I, again, no one was convinced that this was the bounce back to the bottom of this Bitcoin's descending triangle over here. You know, a lot of people were expecting the crash, of course, and then some sort of recovery, in, which is which is common for Bitcoin to have vol volatile swings down, volatile swings up. You know, that's that's very common here. But now we're at this point where we had a volatile swing down and z such an insignificant bounce to the upside. And I, I'm seeing that across the board. Across the board. And so I, I want to move you. I want to move you actually, Joe, to Ripple, because Ripple had, I mean, tumultuous and I think volatile doesn't even come close to describing to what happened there. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Ripple had a crazy upside day. And this this candle right here for educational purposes is called a spinning top, where the wick is about equal on top as the wick on bottom and the body, as you can see, is relatively small. So here we're sitting on a spinning top. That's a neutral candle that tells you there is a lot of buying activity, a lot of selling activity, but it closed out in a pretty neutral uh, pretty neutral position here. Right. So yeah, with all that upside action with Ripple, it's, it fell right back down. I'm not convinced that Ripple is doing anything special, obviously outside of its project or within its project. And uh, I mean, consumer confidence here is is at this point in time, very neutral. Um, but I'm not expecting much. I've added to this picture, this technical picture. Here's a support line. There's a little bit more support around here, um, this dotted line. And, you know, it's, it's a little hazy in between here because we moved up, we bounced, you know, the, the harder and faster you move up, yeah. It's like climbing a ladder or something, you know, there's if you if you build a ladder and you, you construct it properly, each step is going to be trustworthy. Each step is going to be a step that you can take and you know that there is support on your feet and on your hands. But when you're moving up so fast, you really didn't test anything. You sprinted up. And so there's no knowing this is all very theoretical space that we're in right now. Yes. Um, this isn't like a, a traditional asset that has 60 years of history or something like that. 50, you know, even 10, uh, well, I guess. In Ripple's case, it doesn't have 10 years. But, you know, uh, when you have an established foundation, there's something that consumers can grasp onto psychologically as what is a reasonable price for this asset, excluding the external narrative. I mean, so, Ripple, and Ripple has been, I think, I, controversial for a while. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to ask you because it's out of interest to me. Do you think Ripple will survive? I don't think Ripple su will survive. I think it's definitely a security. All the things that have happened since Ripple has been in the spotlight have been very shady from uh, distancing XRP from Ripple, from the uh, obvious um, understanding that Ripple and all of its partners had nothing to do with the asset XRP. It was uh, all to do with the various other technologies offered by Ripple Labs. And so that to me made XRP a security, essentially being a fundraising mechanism to fund the other side projects that Ripple wanted to do, Ripple Labs wanted to create in order to assist banks with international payments and, you know, revolutionize that, you know, it's, I know, it's the a very fascinating, way. Fascinating huh? to hear. Uh, no, I said fascinating to hear, but I, I, I had an inclination that you, that you would say there. You're not the, you're not the only one saying that. Um, let's go through though now the, a few more, a few more coins uh, quickly. Okay. So let's hop into, uh, here's some AOS. Uh, AOS is pretty popular in um, the East. Now, the technical picture, I'm kind of taking a quick look at this. It actually has something similar to Ethereum, and I believe they're both very similar also in technology. Pretty violent fall here. We had a nice jump, and here we go, uh, inverted hammer, right. which is a reversal candle. And we started moving down. Uh, here we are bouncing, going sideways and breaking back down. I see a very similar thing here. Uh, this would be a double top in a way. This is a little bit more of a flat line than you want in a double top, but a breakdown nonetheless sideways. And uh, I just don't really see any positive trajectory here. What I'd be, what I'm looking for, I like, okay, I like things like this, you know, where you can have an, a, a distinguishable movement. Uh, but over here, we're kind of just like flatlining. We're going sideways, right? And in a bear market, sideways is pretty dangerous to me. So especially when the question is, what is the bottom? Is the bottom in is the million dollar question. And as long as we're going sideways in that question, people are leaning toward no or unanswered, then I'm thinking sideways is pretty bad. And uh, I'm expecting, you know, further downside action. Right. Wow. Joe says, 
Um, you're one of the few people I actually understand everything that you say. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for joining us um, uh, today. And of course, everybody else, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs>